guys, when I first started to try to walk with the Lord, I had some hiccups, you know? I mean, I just, it was difficult. And the reason why it was difficult, honestly, is because I wasn't willing, I wasn't ready to give up everything just yet. There were things I still want to do. There were still things I like to do. And then once I reached a place that I really wanted the Lord, I thank God he, he chose me, right? Thank God he chose us. What I realized was I was trying to make things very hard. I was still following a regime that I may have seen um, and, and thought was right. This is how you're supposed to go and talk to the Lord. This is what you're supposed to do. So I need to have, you know, a Bible scripture present and uh, I need to pray first. Or, and, and then I need to maybe worship for a while or worship first and then pray. And then take out all the and thens. And be led by the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you how this works, guys. If you truly in your heart know that you want the things of God, do not be deterred by your hiccups and the things that you do that is wrong. Now, <laughs> with that being said, it's not, oh, just, just do wrong. Mm -mm. Dedicate time. This is something that I remember I was doing. I always went to God. I always went to God. I always will go to God. How do you go to God? Well, first of all, he's everywhere, but I would make it a thing that I need to go and talk to God. And I would pray and I would talk. I always say I had a time. I shared this video before I was sitting inside my closet at a big old closet. I was able to sit in there. I had a glass of wine in my hand and I was drinking the glass of wine it was a rather large glass too yeah and I was very sad about some things and I was actually crying and I just started to talk to God I started to ask some questions but I knew in my heart I wanted God I didn't like where I was at that place in that time in my life and I I just prayed and I asked God to help me and I talked to God I found myself sometimes I was in a place where I was being sexually immoral. I was doing wrong. And at the moment, I'm just like, God, I hate this. I hate what I'm doing. But yet I like it. I'm enjoying it. I want to stop and I can't seem to stop. And I should just cry to God and go talk to him. I'm like, Lord, please help me and save me. And I was consistent in going to God. No matter what is going on, make time for God. You made time for sin, you better make time to go talk to God. And if you go to him and really just talk to him, guys, I'm telling you, he will change you. Because when he changed my life, it was just like this. It was sudden. It was sudden. He turned my heart completely. He turned me completely from the things that I enjoyed, the things that I desired, the things that I want to do, the desire to have a drink. I remember even when my desire to drink was, was still there. And the Lord was like, I don't want you to drink anymore. And I was like, what, but you was drinking, I thought, eh, come on. But no. But I knew I wanted God. I wanted him. I desired him. So I started to just pour those things down. Pour them bottles. It wasn't giving it away. He said, pour it out. And in that act of pouring those drinks down, opening those bottles of wine and pouring it down and pouring it down, that desire left. And I remember once just having a moment where I was like, you know, I just feel like drinking again. And I went and I bought it and I tried to drink it and I got sick. I got sick. It didn't even taste good. It tasted horrible. So what am I saying? Don't you dare give up. It's a made up mind. I kept going to God. How did I keep going to God? I would get up at a certain time in the morning and go talk to God. And I'll talk to God. And I'll talk to God. And I'll sit in my car. I drove. I remember sitting once in a parking lot and just sitting and talking to God. And talking to God. God, I don't understand why this is going on. What is happening? Are you still hearing me? Lord, are you with me? Are you hearing me? Did you hear me last night? Did you hear me this morning? God, I need you. I want to change. And there's something that is happening in our hearts, my brothers and sisters. It's not that God wants us to be begging him. But he sees our hearts. Something was happening in my heart that I was not aware of. In my tenacity. That he changed me. 
and turned me around. And everything else that has happened in my life has nothing to do with me. But the fact that Jesus entered in and took over and has given me a peace and has given me a desire that I don't desire the things of old. I had to make some practical moves too, guys. Because a lot of times we want God to just come and move that man. There was this particular guy, my brothers and sisters, he was my kryptonite. He was my kryptonite. This man was about 6'2", extremely handsome. He was, he was very well built. And we just connected and we could just talk we could laugh we could just talk we could laugh and then the sexual connection was just like ah, okay and even though i left and I, I i moved away and everything i found that whenever we would connect whether we were talking on facebook and and things of that nature it, we he could I would find myself going in another arena where we find ourselves reminiscing and talking and and it he will just permeate my very being. This man I realized I had to get away from. So what did I do? Did I ask our Lord take him away? No, God says block. Block. Blocked him. Everything. His number. Everything. I took that faith step. And did all of those things, guys. Why? There's certain things. You got to cut it off. God is willing to take you further. But God's not going to make you stop liking that person. You have to take the step, first of all, to end it. To shut the door. To do take those practical steps you need to take to get away from that person. And watch the Lord turn your heart and change your heart and do those things now that I don't desire, I don't miss. Now it doesn't mean, oh, well, now I can unblock and, and now I can start talking to him again. No, get out of that. That's the past. That's sin. Stop getting into them conversations with her, him, them. God will turn your heart around, change your mind, change your being. But you must be tenacious and determined. Make time for God no matter what. No matter what. No matter where you're at. You go and you talk to him and you be real with him. And you, you, you must desire him because I've always desired God. Always desired the Lord. I know I've always desired the Lord. But the enemy had put it in my mind that God don't like you. Look at your life. Look at what's going on. Oh, if God liked you, if God cares so much about you, then how come you're having all these things going on? How come you have this car that work when it wants to work? I had a car that if it rained, I can forget it. I'm not going to be going to work that day. It seemed like all hell was breaking loose. It seemed like, oh, just all kinds of wrong was going on. But I was in sin. When you're in sin, living in sin, things happen, guys. And guys, sometimes we have to realize the purpose. Sometimes things is happening because it's bringing you to your divine purpose. And I didn't understand that. So I believe that I was his redheaded stepchild. I did not think God liked me at all. So I then in my heart, instead of going to God to find out what, I felt like, God, I'm trying to reach you. You don't like me. Okay, I guess I'm meant to be a sinner. And so so I went off and did what I wanted to do. I was clubbing. I was doing wrong. I was fighting. I was cussing people out. I was letting you have it. I was letting you know what's up. You know what I'm saying? What you going to say to me? You can't say nothing to me. Shut up. You know, I was just that person. Sarcastic. Can just say whatever and hurt your feelings. Like the, by the time you finish saying something, I've already thought about 70 things that I'm going to say that's going to send you crying and want to fight me or making you really, recon, you know, really Think about what type of person you are and if you're worth it. I knew I'd hurt you. But why? There was hurt in me. And I went completely off the scale and could sin without blinking. I would plan it, carry it out. It was just a part of me. I had no conviction whatsoever. And if anybody talked to me about God or mentioned God, I would very, I will get so annoyed. I didn't cuss him out, but there was this irritation. There's this irritation inside of me where I was like, you know, when I'm hearing about God, I want you to serve him and to submit. Those things will send something in me. I would feel this 
just anger in my heart, but realize, not realizing that's the spirit that's in me. That's angry. But to me, I felt I was angry because I've been trying to serve you. I've gone into these churches with these raggedy folks up in there that's been misrepresented. I didn't even think misrepresenting you. What kind of God is this? What kind of, you know, skid row folks is this? You're doing the same thing I used to do out here or worse. I had, I can trust more of the sinner than y'all folks up in here. That was my thought process. But little did I know that God had a plan for me. Little did I know that they were misrepresenting him. That was not who he was. But yet I blame God. Why do you let that happen to me then? But don't you know we have purpose? Don't you know that it was not really fair for Jesus to be born? He was born to die. He was born to be crucified, but there was a greater cause. So the crucifixions and the things that we go through and the, the horrible things that we've gone through our lives. Number one, God has always given us choice. The choice of certain people in our lives, the things of people that we encountered, they made choices to do some wrong things. And we made some wrong choices to be with them and some wrong choices to do what we wanted to do. And so we get the ramifications of those things, the repercussions But you know what? In it all, somehow in all of that, I knew that I needed God. And so I may, I, I just stayed up. I, I just asked God, no matter what, even in times when I would, would, you know, I have my moments where I was home alone and I'm, no one is with me and I will turn on my reggae and my soca and whatever, and just be dancing around the house and drinking my drink and, you know, maybe having a rum and Coke or maybe just having a, my wine. But then I moved from the rum and Coke because, you know, and, oh, well, at least, you know, wine is a little more classy. So you're not so bad. And I'll do that. And I'll be dancing and breaking it down and whining and carrying on and then all of that I'll feel a darkness and lay down in the middle of all the soca in my drinks and look up to God and say God I know there's more would you really take me as I am will you really take me like this will you take me in this wretched form will you take me as I'm here with my head buzzing and my mind all over the place would you take me God as I have now changed the sheets of my night of fornicating and doing wrong will you now take me God as I know I want you but here I am here I am God getting ready to text and say yeah where can we meet and planning my next rendezvous God I want to stop but I can't but will you take me as I am And he did, y'all. He heard me. I didn't think he was hearing me. But he heard me. And he heard you. He hears you. So don't give up. Don't give up. The enemy wants us to give up. Because only we have the power to cash in. And to let go of God. Find out your back history from the Lord. Find out why. Find out why these things happen. Find out why you went through the things that you did. Because God has taken the time to come down to my level. And to explain to me why I experienced the things that I did. Why I went through the things that I went through. And I realized the moments and the things that I was looking at and thinking that he hated me. And he wasn't with me. He was with me all along. He was with me all along. And now here I am today, able to do the things that I am doing right now, telling you about the things I'm telling you about right now. I'm not sure what I'm going to name this just yet. Maybe I'll call this a mini testimony. Mini testimony, I might be seven or eight. I might talk to them, I may call it that. I don't know yet. But don't you dare give up. I went through all that I went through so that I can sit here on this channel on this day to tell you not to give up and to keep going now you need to grab the baton and keep going and keep pushing because there are people that's waiting to hear your testimony and to hear you tell them to hold on to stay the course with the father all right guys peace out